I wanted to talk about the import functions of Pro Tools. There are several ways to do this. One of the ways we could do it is go to the File menu and go down to Import. If we're trying to bring in things that are part of a session, like for instance, tracks or maybe memory locations, we would do that with something called Import Session Data. That's an advanced concept that's covered in a different video. In this video, I just want to talk about just simple importation of things that we can work on. I can import audio on a Mac by hitting Command-Shift-I. I can import MIDI by hitting Command-Option-I. I can import video by hitting Command-Shift-Option-I. And I can also import clip groups as well. Let's start by importing a simple audio clip. So I'll hit Command-Shift-I. Once I've selected the clip that I want, within the Import Audio dialog, it allows me to audition it. I wanted to talk more. It gives me basic information about it. When I do this, I recommend people never hit the button that says Add. So the other choice is Copy, or it might be Convert if it was a different sample rate. Add is going to leave the sound where it is and then just utilize it inside your session, but it might be on another folder on another drive or something like that. So if you hit copy or convert, it's always gonna copy it over into your audio files folder. Once I've done this, I can hit done. It's going to ask me where I wanna put the audio. I always wanna put it in my audio files folder. And I click open. Once I do that, it brings up a dialogue and it asks me if I want to put it on a new track or put it into my clips list over on the right side for using later. Within the new track, you have the option to just put it at the beginning of the session. You can place it where your cursor is. That is called selection. Or if you hit spot, it will bring up a window asking you to type in a location for the sound to go. I'm just gonna put it at my session start. If I do this, it automatically creates a track for me. And there I have some audio. There is a more sophisticated way to do this. And that is going up to window and opening up something called new workspace or a workspace browser. I can also access this by hitting option I and it brings up this window here. There are six ways I can view things in a workspace browser. One is sound libraries. We'll cover that in a different video. Volumes essentially acts like your finder does in your operating system. It shows your drives here. It shows all the files that are on the drives. The distinct difference is that this also shows the metadata on each one of those files. If you right click on this bar up here, you can see all the different types of metadata that are available to you. And I can organize this in any way that I want. I'm just gonna look at the file name, the waveform, and then also the file comments. Now I can see metadata that's been stored within these files. I can also audition from here I can audition it and I can also start it from different places, which is something I can't do in my normal import audio dialog. I can also look at things based on my session elements. This will have all of my audio files and my session all together in one place, regardless of whether they're on different drives or not. I also have track presets. If I have standard ways of doing things, like for instance, I do with the voiceover processing I do at my house, I can just take one of these and just drag it into my session and it will create a new track with the, the standard elements and the standard size, things like that. Catalog is for creating custom groups of elements. Let's say every week I would work on projects that needed ocean sounds. In my volumes, I could search ocean sounds, I can select them and I can right click that selection and then I could say create new catalog from selection. I could call it ocean. And then rather than having to go through and search and sort through the things that I want and don't want, I can just recall that here in my catalogs. The thing about a catalog is if I delete elements from a catalog, it does not delete them from a drive. The other thing that's nice about catalogs is even if the drive isn't attached, the file will stay in the catalog for you to find later. Then the last thing is the user, which is essentially like the file structure of your operating system as well. So from any one of these, I can audition things, I can import stuff in, I could just take this and I can drag it into my session on a track if I want. 
Just like with normal importing audio, it's a good idea to make sure that you're making a copy so it lands in your audio files folder and it's not referring to some other drive. To do this, you would go to Preferences, go to the Processing tab, and check Automatically Copy Files on Import and Convert Copied Files to Session Format to make sure it stays with your session in your audio files folder. 